So there's actually a legitimate reason why they do this. First of all, that is a lion-tailed macaque and that is a giant purple squirrel. Two weird animals, but they do have one thing in common. They both have a hard-on for this fruit. That is a jackfruit and squirrels are able to use their sense of smell to find them in the trees. But the jackfruit is only edible when it's ripe and only the squirrels can tell the ripe from the unripe ones. So the macaque will follow the squirrel and let it lead it to the forbidden fruit and then carefully persuade the squirrel to share by slapping the taste out of its mouth. The macaque will deliver five fingers to the face until the squirrel backs off, which is when this disrespectful primate eats the fruit the squirrel found. Only when the macaque is done can the squirrel get the leftovers. The squirrel does all that work just to get its pockets taken by a primate at the end. It's like if taxes had hands and knew how to use them. As a society, we should be more afraid of orangutans. Because if this ginger flavored refrigerator ever decides to plant it of the ape sus, we're f I'm gonna ignore the fact that the biggest ones can weigh 200, 300 pounds and probably phone book rip a grown man in half. Let me tell y'all a story on why we should be more afraid of them. So at the Omaha Zoo in Nebraska, the zookeeper showed up in the morning and found five of the orangutans just chilling outside their enclosure. Someone forgot to lock the enclosure, so they brought them back in, no big deal. Except, it happened again with the zookeepers finding the orangutans posted outside like Thanos in Endgame. It just kept happening to the point where the head keeper was ready to put someone on unemployment. It's until they found out why. There was an orangutan named Fu Manchu who had found a lockpick and bent it so he could use it as a key to unlock the maintenance door. The reason it took so long to find out is because he hid the lock between his gum and lips where nobody would be crazy enough to look. Sometimes he'd free all of his friends and while the orangutans were running around the zoo, Fu Manchu would go back to his enclosure and act innocent. It's a cute story, until you realize a 300 pound orange Bigfoot that decides when he wants to leave could easily put anybody in the zoo on CNN if you wanted to. Nature made them gentle giants, but if they ever decide to choose violence, coffins are going to be on wholesale. This guy has a plan and I do not like it. That is an American woodcock, and fun fact, they have some of the greatest nicknames of any bird. According to Wikipedia, it also answers to the Timberdoodle, the Bog Sucker, and the Hokum Poke. The wild Timberdoodle can be found all across the eastern half of North America. Now for the dance walking, it's believed they do this to catch food. They eat mostly earthworms, and they'll stick and probe their bill into the soil and slurp up any worms they find. And by walking slowly and stepping hard with their feet, it causes any worm below to fear for its life and move around in the soil, which makes it easier for the Timberdoodle to find lunch. And it's probably true because these birds are most active early morning and early evening, which is when the worms do the most and are easiest to catch. The more you know. Yeah, this is a thing that happens. Eagles will drag and drop goats off cliffs and then let them fall to their death. That was a golden eagle and just for the record, it can have an 8 foot wingspan. This guy is 7. Not to mention this demon Tweety has talons strong enough to break bones in your hand and crush a monkey's skull. Not only that, but this flying bundy will hunt full-grown deer, baby caribou, and as you've seen, goats. Problem is, goats ain't soft, and one kick could break their hollow bones and cripple the bird for life. So instead, if a golden eagle ever catches a goat slipping, first it'll grab it with those vice grips across feet and attempt to yeet them off the cliff even though the goat can weigh more than they do. They don't let go until the last second, sending the goat free-falling without a parachute. It was definitely manslaughter, but by letting the goat get clapped by gravity, this feather fell and gets a free meal without having to risk its own life. But goats aren't the only victim. Eagles have been known to airdrop tortoises from hundreds of feet in the air until the shell shatters on the ground below. And allegedly, one eagle turned a man into a name on a stone after it dropped a tortoise on the back of its head. The goat got hit with a real-life blue shell. Also, this steroid homicide pigeon has been known to attack wolves and run phase with foxes because they don't discriminate, anyone can get the smoke. They live by no morals and answer to no god, and they probably could be putting people on shirts if they really wanted to. Billions. We've spent billions of dollars trying to explore space when the real ET sh is happening right in the ocean. This alien is actually crinoid, which is a type of ethnoderm, which is just a fancy science way of saying this thing is related to starfish, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. The free swimming ones are called feather stars. But like all adults, eventually they have to settle down and be boring, and once they're attached to the sea floor, they're known as sea lilies. They feed by snatching whatever plankton mess around and touch those arms, and when they do, their arms push them towards a the feeding groove where they get propelled towards the mouth like a conveyor belt. And because the ocean is a f***ing simulation, the longest crinoid fossils ever found were 130 feet long, and in case you don't understand what that is, the largest giant squid ever caught was 43 feet, and the biggest blue whales are just under 100. Matter of fact, this prehistoric starfish on steroids would have been almost half the length of the Statue of Liberty. Some old heads too, with some fossils believed to be over 340 million years old, meaning they came up when Saturn was single because they're older than its rings. The feather star is able to swim even though it doesn't have eyes or a brain, meaning I'm officially out of excuses. They use instincts to swim, with their arms propelling them forward. My dad tried to teach me through instinct by throwing me in the pool, instead he almost got a baptism and an abortion for the price of one. If the feather star loses an arm to an op, they can always grow up back, and some species have 150 arms to spare. The only off thing about them is that their mouth is literally right next to their anus, which literally sucks ass. But other than that, this breaststroking body snatcher is actually pretty cool. Hello?
She's a stronger person than me, because my soul would have filed for divorce the moment this thing pulled up on my address. This goat has a plan, and it is not a good one. From the look of those soul-sapped eyes, closing the door might slow it down, but it won't stop it. Anyway, this is a La Mancha goat. They look like they don't have ears, but they do. It's just that the outer part is basically non-existent. Also, it looks possessed because they have rectangles for pupils. But to be fair, having this helps them watch out for predators even while eating. And speaking of eating, even though they look like the spawn of Satan's barnyard, they're perfectly harmless because they mostly eat shrubs, herbs, and small trees. Except this guy, he eats souls and he finna go grocery shopping. Bro posted up like a Jehovah's Witness, but instead of speaking of the Lord, he looks like he'd rather just take you to him. Those are the eyes of a goat that is not afraid of hell. This is how flamingos feed their young. I'm not gonna lie to you, that looks really bad, but it's not what you think. It's not a flamingo putting another one on the news, they're both trying to feed its baby. Flamingos use crop milk to keep their chick alive for the first couple of weeks, and both the male and female do this. Crop milk obviously isn't actual milk, but it's the lining of the bird's crop, which is where they store food before it's digested. The gut juice is also high in protein and fat, and even red and white blood cells, which is basically the bird version of giving your baby vitamins for its immune system. Penguins and pigeons do the whole crop milk thing too. Now I'm gonna go ahead and answer two questions you probably already have. Number one, the reason it's red is because they're dyed, and feeding the chick red milk actually causes the parents to lose color, which they get back once the chick starts eating on its own. And number two, the reason the flamingo on top is just spilling it on the other's head, I have no idea. To be fair, flamingo's brain is smaller than its eyeballs, so they're probably just a little confused. Which is a nice way of saying they're just a special kind of stupid. Lights are on, but ain't nobody home. This lizard can shrink its bones. This baby Godzilla is a marine iguana, and they're the only lizards that actually go out into the ocean. And even though it looks like it should be getting ready to put another gorilla on the news, they're actually harmless and eat mostly seaweed and algae. The problem is, at least once a year, the waters get warmer and destroys the red and green algae that the iguanas like to eat, which causes a lot of them to starve and become a hashtag. So to stay alive, some of the iguanas will shrink and they can become up to 20% shorter. That would be like a six foot man waking up a pair of heels short of five feet. Many scientists believe they're able to reabsorb their own bones, which is what causes the shrinkage. Now the reason they do this is because the smaller they are, the less food they need and the less energy they have to waste trying to find it. Once the water gets cooler and the algae comes back, the iguana goes back to normal size. Moral of this video, we eat less to lose weight and they lose length to eat less. Listen here, I'm about to tell you five things you did not know about the octopus. Number one, you know how the man of war is basically a jellyfish on juice? That can have you looking like you got 50 shaded? Well, the octopus will strap up by arming themselves with the tentacles of the man of war and swing them at any predator or op that tries to press them. Basically using the disembodied venom arms the same way a corner store junkie might use a broken beer bottle as a weapon. Number two, they have post-nut clarity so bad it literally kills them. After the heat puss hits for the first time, he pretty much goes into the octopus version of dementia. Symptoms include not eating, body lesions, uncoordinated movements, and the skin around his eyes retracting. This is called senescence, and it means he falls apart from the inside until either a predator puts him out of his misery or he starves to death. Our boy Squidward has two choices in life. He can either live a virgin or die a man. Number three, octopus will throw hands at fish right in the dome piece, and with eight arms, there's plenty of hands to go around. We used to think they did this as a defensive response, but now it's believed they do it purely out of spite. Number four, octopus will team up with other fish while hunting, and they often choose groupers as partners. They work together and reap the benefits. Sometimes the octopus will switch up enticing the fish right in the head, but now we believe they do it to keep the fish honest. It's not confirmed, but it's believed that they smack around their hunting partners to keep them in line and keep them from cheating them out of food. Who knows, maybe the octopus got screwed over by his last fish friend and works through his trauma by uppercutting his current partner. And number five, octopus are members of a group called cephalopod which is also part of a group called gastropods which includes snails and slugs meaning squidward and gary are actually related and yeah that boy squidward is actually an octopus man's got misspecied by his own moms you hate to see it so i said this was one of the smallest primates in the world but i never said what was the smallest that title belongs to this little guy right here this is a mouse lemur it's probably the cutest animal you've never heard of and if you have it's probably because of this guy as you can probably guess this baby face tree jockey lives in madagascar there's different types of them, but the smallest of them all is the Madame Birth's mouse lemur, and at about 1.1 ounces, most of them weigh less than a pencil. They also have by far the smallest brain of any primate, and at about 2 grams, it weighs about as much as a paperclip, which explains why Mort is half a century with the mind of a toddler. These Morts of the world eat small insects, fruits, flowers, nectar, and sometimes each other. But they get bodied by almost everything, and one of their biggest ops are the Fusa. Apparently, there's a good part of the internet that didn't know this actually existed. Mouse lemurs avoid becoming Fusa food by hiding in trees all day. Also, lemurs in general have learned to recognize the alarm calls of birds and then do the dash whenever they hear them. I forgot to mention this, but more specifically is a Goodman's mouse lemur. In case you were curious, King Julian is a ringtail and that boy Maurice is an eye-eye. I don't really have a joke to end the video, so here's a baby mouse lemur. 